Hey, everybody. Welcome to another uh, podcast, Struggling Hunters. You got me, Eric, on this side and Joe over there on that side. Howdy, guys. Perfect. Uh, here we are another night getting into it. We're uh, going to leave this one kind of open, just whatever hits the old uh, noggin. We're going to talk about a little bit. And and uh, I don't know, it might go good. It might might not go so good. But uh, we're going to do the best we can. I think it'll be all right, though. Uh, one thing that uh, – go, I'll just start it off because it, it has been on my mind a little bit, uh, and it's a little bit related to uh, the outdoors, is uh, when – like with this uh, – okay, everybody knows that Russia is attacking Ukraine right now. And uh, one thing – I mean – there's so much wrong with it. And I mean, it's, it's a whole nother thing, but I did have a thought. I'm like, man, what's, I wonder what those animals, like the animals in the wildlife in uh, Ukraine are, are going through right now, what kind of stress they're going through. And I don't even know what kind of animals they have in Ukraine, but I imagine they probably have bear and deer of some sort. Maybe I, I, I don't really know. Uh, I didn't really think about looking it up whenever I asked this question. I just thought about asking the question. Um, but, you know, uh, right now, uh, that's been kind of really the big, the big thing in the world going on right now is that war. But it is kind of a, like a little side note, like, man, I wonder, I wonder what's happening with the wildlife, what's going on there, you know, if, Right. What all exactly how they feel the stress of what's going on uh -huh. or if they uh -huh. know fully what's going on. Yeah, you know, I don't know. <laughs> it is kind of interesting to kind of think about, but at the same time, I think that they know something's going on. They feel those stresses, you know, yeah. something out of the ordinary happens. Like I think they're, uh, they're able to, to uh, clue into what's going on, you know, like, if it's if something's different, something's different. And when you, when change happens, it's, uh, it can be felt. And then I think too, they could probably, I think animals have the uh, ability to uh, sense stress or fear or what, what not from humans, you know, like they can pick up on that body language. And I think at times they can, they can smell, you put off some type of a pheromone and they can smell what you're feeling. Um, so, you know, like <laughs> sure they know something's going on, but I don't think they know what's going on. Yeah. And I guess, you know, you think of that, how long it lasts. So, you know, like got meaning, you know, that, that type of different stress on the animals, how that affects them too. It's kind of an interesting thought. Yeah. It's, uh, I don't know, you know, it's just one of those things, I guess, like a byproduct of, of us being, uh, an outdoors podcast YouTube channel. It was just uh, something that I was, you know, just kind of was like, man, well, I, I guess a part of me wanted to talk about it on the podcast because it is, it is a, uh, I, it's a weird. Seeing live missiles go into buildings and stuff from from somebody like me and you uh you know recording off of their cell phone it's it's a different this is a different a different war a different world and uh it really hits home but uh yeah i kind of wanted to talk about it a little bit but then like also bring it into you know the outdoors fashion of i wonder what kind of environment it is for the wildlife right well so according to the old interweb it says there's about uh there's about eight thousand brown bears and uh god i got i thought i had a little bit more so it says that the <laughs> fact checked in here on the spot and jumping around from article to article but it says that it does have a let's see 
includes 45,000 species, including the areas of Black Sea protected across, so protected areas. Um, let's see, a couple national parks. So there's, you know, places for the wild animals to be. Oh, I clicked on this one because this one actually in the little thumbnail, it like called out species, but it is when I clicked into it, everything disappeared. So I guess there is wildlife there, but. Um, well, like you said, definitely black bears there. <laughs> yeah. But they're probably, well, they've probably been awoken, I'm sure now, because I was going to say they're probably hibernating, but. They probably got woken up. So here's one that says uh, beavers, ground squirrels. You know, I guess. Um, um, we'll see a form of a wild wild sheep, like a Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep. It's called a Mao flan. Kind of mm. interesting. They have that's interesting. Eurasian elk, but so I guess that's it's a moose. They call it. A form of an elk over there. They have marten, they have badgers, and birds. And like those are like the top ones that they that this little article went over. So they do have. It seems like they have game animals. So yeah, yeah. So they're probably. I mean, they're definitely, obviously, getting affected by it all. Yeah, some way or another, I'm sure. But yeah. Which is, I mean, I, I don't want to, I don't want to sound like uh, disconnected. Like, I mean, I, I, I understand that the whole animal situation is kind of a, a byproduct of what's actually going on over there. True. But, but uh, I was just trying to relate it to our, to our channel a little bit and, and also talk, talk about it in our own way. Uh, I know that we don't really get political or anything but uh yeah i don't know man i definitely stand i will give an opinion on it and i definitely from what i can see and what i can tell honestly i didn't know much about ukraine until recently even whenever the last administration was going through the phone call deal or whatever i still didn't know much about ukraine but I definitely know a lot more about them now and it doesn't seem like they're a bad country. It seems like they're just all trying to survive and right. And, uh, I don't know. I, so, you know, what I'm saying is I stand with Ukraine and feel bad for them. And I don't know. I hope the hope the, the, uh, NATO or, or the U S or, or both kind of get involved soon and help them out. True. And that president that Ukraine has is pretty awesome leader. Uh, I don't know if I told you. I don't know. I mean, I know you've been pretty busy, Joe, and I was kind of filling the in earlier. But um, the U or I don't know if it was the U.S., but I think it was the U.S. or or somebody uh, basically offered the Ukrainian president a, a. to to get them out of the country, you know, say, Hey, you know, get out of the country safe. And, uh, then the president said, I don't need a ride. I need ammo. And, uh, (laughs) he's, he's in the, you know, he's in the fight. He's in the middle of it fighting for his, for his country. And so right now, you know, he's kind of, he's kind of, I think he'll go down as a pretty much because of that statement and his actions so far, he's going to, he's going to go down in history as a, a pretty top notch leader. And Hmm. it's a lot more, I'll say this much as, and I feel like our, our following ship might agree a little bit. If you don't, that's fine. But that's more than I can say about our leadership in in this country. So I'll leave it there, but that's how I feel. That's my personal Uh belief. So. True, and I was gonna just say back when you're saying how he was the, that president of Ukraine is standing up for what he believes in, uh, and uh, I was gonna like you know kind of just go back and hit it a little closer to home and asking, you know, like I guess bring accountability back to us and like, you know, what all have we been practicing, what we've been preaching about, you know, as far as hunting and getting in shape and due diligence and all that, you know, like. <laughs> 
<laughs> we, oh. like in a way, st- standing up for what we believe in as far as all that goes, you know. I don't want to yeah. go in too deep into it because I, I feel like we go, if, if anyone's been listening, they know that we, I guess you can say we stress working out and whatnot, <laughs> but we don't quite follow it to the T that we want to. And that's, yeah, anyways. And we don't, we can go the whole dark hole down another hole just on all that. But I just was, you know, trying to say, you know, follow his example and stand up for what you believe in. Yeah. Well, I think, uh, I think his leadership and, and uh, his actions definitely can be reflected on yourself and just trying to do the right, right things, you know, bringing it back to hunt and getting in shape. Everything else is, like you said, just, just, you know, pushing forward and doing what you need to do to, cause that's a good question, Joe, or, you know, that's kind of a good statement. Like we can, we can definitely talk the talk and that's what our podcast is about is talking the talk, but do we always walk the walk? And I'd say <laughs> it's It gets a little difficult at times. It, you know, we're trying to do the best we can, but with life and family and everything else, other obligations, you, you tend to, you can easily fall off that track, even though you want to be here, you just sometimes are landing here, you know, a little yeah. below, I guess for the podcast people are <laughs> saying your target, you sometimes your, your targets are higher than your actual landing spots. So true. Well, that's like the thing too, is like trying this whole, learn to get better and be better and do better and doing that, making those changes. You know, I, <laughs> I think that's, I think this whole last year, actually all like the last two years now in trying to, to create new habits. And if you've been, for those that have listened to the podcast, you know, we've talked about trying to throw out old, old hunting. Uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, habits i know i'd use the word habits but just lifestyle maybe or what you associate hunting to and and what your expectations are of hunting and then trying to become i guess more more successful is that are you a better hunter if you're more successful or are you a better hunter like there's a question what what exactly is a better hunter someone that's more successful or someone that understands the animal. Uh, I, or is that even coming I, across how I hit how how I have it in my no, mind? No, I, I I like I like what you're I like where you're going there because um and I'm not I'm not coming from a from like a judgmental place, but uh a person that gets a guided hunt and has more mounts and bigger mounts on his wall, does that necessarily make him a better hunter than a guy that maybe don't have quite as many mounts or whatever, but goes out every year and works his butt off and does the best he can. Right. Which one's the better hunter? Right. I, well, I exactly like, I, as I try to relate myself to it and like what I, what I'm hearing there too is, you know, so the guy is the guy that's paying, paying a guide. Okay. So let's kind of just go down that rabbit hole for a second. And kind of compare to, I'll, I'll use me as a, as an example. And uh, so the guy that's paying a, a guide to go out, so the guide wants to get paid. Right. And so I guess if he doesn't care very much, he can, and then he can take the guy out and maybe show him some sign. Oh yeah. There's elk in the area never come across anything, but he can't never come across anything too many years in a row then he'll be out of a job because the word will start getting out that he's a crappy guide. So he has to get where the elk are, the deer are, whatever it is, he's hunting. Now for me, um, I guess this is a lesson that I've, I've been trying to learn. And I think both of us are getting better at it just because I feel like this last year we've had more run-ins with elk than we've had in the past couple of years. Um, but putting you know it seems like the big thing is you got to put yourself where the elk are you know there's that that everyone seems to say you know elk are where you where where you find them 
meaning you can have an awesome elk area, but they don't necessarily have to be there. So, you know, and then it goes into uh, maybe a little bit extra scouting time in the summertime before you get into it and getting into understanding the numbers of an area, you know, and then understanding what season the elk is in and it's in their season, meaning, you know, like post rut, rut, pre rut, um, calving season, you know, evidently we're not going to be hunting during that time, but, You know, I think the, the takeaway that I'm trying to get at is understanding where the elk are. Like a guy that's paying a guide, the guide's going to try to get you where the elk are. And for me in the past, I kind of been under the mentality, well, I mean, not that I've covered a lot of ground, but was if I get out there and just, you know, put my boots to the ground, God, I'm, as I'm sitting here talking, like my mind's like mowing over the things I've changed and whatnot. And and so put, so my thought, I'm sorry, guys, my mind is just starting to turn as I'm judging myself here. But, uh, but, you know, like if I just put boots on the ground enough and spend enough time hiking and in the woods, I should trip across them, which is an okay idea. But at the same time, if you're not seeing elk, if it feels like within like the first day, half a day or whatever, you know, like you got to move areas. Now, where I've been hunting, that's how I think you got to hunt it. I think and, you know, as far as understanding your elk hunting areas is you got to understand. So this is a new thought that, I've, that, that we've talked about, but I'm forming a new thought and hopefully it sticks. So you have your areas that you, can, you can't glass all that well. So you got to have boots on the ground. And then you're going to have your areas that's going to have awesome glassing opportunities where you can sit on a knob and just watch areas. And I think that's one of the things you kind of got to go into understanding is, you know, like, okay, this is a boots only area where I'm going to be on the ground hiking. Where are the elk going to be when I'm, uh, when I'm hiking, this is a glassing area. I'll be able to get here at, you know, the crack of dawn, where are the elk going to be at that time of the day? What side of the mountains do I need to focus on and, and be able to, to glass, you know, a big area. So I, I guess I maybe just had an aha moment sitting there talking to you as to how to judge an area of where I'm going to be hunting elk. Yeah. Uh, you got me thinking about that a little bit is uh, both, both situations have their difficulties, right? Uh, going into an area where it's, there's not a very good glassing vantage points it's really hard to tell. I mean, you, well, actually I take that back. One way to tell if there's elk in the area is by sign. The one thing right. that elk like to leave is a lot of sign. Correct. Which, which is a good thing. Uh, sometimes though, the hard thing is, and as uh, Joe told me one time, and I think we brought it up in the past is the only time I can tell the only time I could get a slight idea when, when an elk has been there is when the poop's actually fallen out of, out of the elk's butt and uh so that so what i mean by that is whenever you see poop on the ground i mean even if it looks fresh you don't know if it's two days old one day old i would say during archery it's a little easier because it dries up so fast right um but still it could be one day and it looked fresh you know or whatnot so anyways uh yeah if you don't have a lot of glassing points though sign is probably one of the best ways to indicate if you're into elk if you have good glassing point from my experience and just kind of what i've learned over the year if you have really good glassing point if you happen to spot an elk the hardest part about that side of it is cutting the distance closing the gap right and uh so i don't know i don't know which one's <laughs> you know, which one you'd rather do or, or not do or. Well, that's the thing is, you know, you have your druthers and what you're going to do and what you want to do. But then again, it's just being able to understand and read your area that you're in. So like, you know, like you might have one way you like to hunt. And so it's it maybe, maybe that's how you narrow, narrow down your areas. You know, like um, this may be an awesome 
uh, elk habitat, but I like to put, um, I like to put my, my boots on the ground. So uh, I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to be here because this is just a big glassing area. So, or, you know, like I, I don't like glassing. So I'm going to go into the areas where I can, I know I can cover a lot of ground and where they're going to be. But well, that is the nice thing about glassing area though, or having a glassing area is essentially you can kind of save your energy uh until you you glass something up you know and then then you can work on oh, how you're gonna make your move uh the one thing about kind of trying to find your trying to find your your elk and and everything is uh uh or in the thicker stuff non-glassing areas is uh you kind of walk in until you run into something you know or right i mean you can kind of stay in one spot i mean i mean i guess yeah, but the thing is, is if you go into an area and you're not good glassing and you're not seeing a lot of sign, you stay in one spot, you might waste all your time staying in that spot. And that's, <laughs> you know, my experience of elk hunting. I mean, I'm just constantly moving, trying to find elk right. until I find them. Correct. And then they move on you the next day and then you got to refine them again. Right. Maybe. <laughs> but it does seem to happen but anyway yeah i don't know it's uh we kind of bounced around pretty hard but i guess we ended up on elk so <laughs> true that's we all did. that matters that's all that matters but uh no nah, it's it's uh i don't know it's uh it's uh i'm kind of i kind of lost focus on <laughs> where to go from there to be honest with you well i mean yeah. i guess as i said and you're thinking about it you know and in a way and i think i just you know kind of found my new way of looking at an area you know like so that way i know how to work an area you know okay if this is the only area i'm going to be is this a boots on the ground or is this a glassing area so okay now i i got those two options now, how am I going to make the most of that situation of the one of the two? So, you know, just another way to help you. I, you know, like everyone seems to, as you listen to Born and Raised, Hush, Randy, they always seem to have plan A, B, and C, or plan A, point two, plan, you know, so like there's always these plans. And so that just helps you set your plan up and know what you do. How many times in the past, I know I'm way guilty of it, I get to an area and it's like, what am I going to do now? Where do I got to go? <laughs> well, I think I'm going to go this way. Why? I don't know. <laughs> you know, so it's just another way to help you make a plan. And it's, and they seem to say that if you follow your plans, you're, you're going to be more successful. Yeah. It, it, it uh, I mean, that makes sense to me. And, and, uh, to kind of go off of that, I was thinking about that is, is um, whenever, like, uh, now I'm doing it, Joe, you like gave it to me or something. <laughs> I don't know what happened here, but you gave it to me. Well, I'll be honest with you. Do, do you see the time? Yes. Oh, boy. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what happened. I'll tell you what happened. We're, we're going to have to have a hard out here pretty quick, but what happened was we had that technical difficulty. Yeah. If you got back on, it tried to indicate that we had three people on, but it was you uh, and you and me. Right. So it, it gave us our time limit. So anyway, guys, really sorry about it, but man, we've been having some technical difficulties. <laughs> I don't know if it's because we're creeping up on 100 and it's like, ah, we're, Ah, I don't know. But anyways, that's what's kind of going on. I know I know it distracted Joe and I both at the same time because it popped up on my screen too. And I was going to yeah. power through it, but then I'm sitting there like losing my concentration going, <laughs> oh, what are we going to do? We're going to have to have a hard out. And I, I didn't, I had a feeling that you saw it too, but anyway, yeah. So anyways, elk hunting though, yeah, it's, uh, I, I like what you said there, Joe, is just having those plans and 
And that was one thing where I was aggressive this last year. And, and I feel like it finally, it worked out. It kind of took all, all hunt season for it to really pan out, but just being on the move until I found my, uh, my, my, until I basically ran into good sign and elk and um, uh, not getting stuck in one spot. And that I really focused on that. And I mean, I could see where you can make mistakes going that route too, but at the same time, I, I, it worked for me, you know, just not getting so honed in on like, I said I was going to hunt this spot and I'm just going to stay here. You know, I was like, I'm not afraid to move. I'll move, you know, and it really helped me. Right. Well, I think that might be a good spot to kind of just end it for the, for the night. So we don't get too much more inter interrupted. So I'll go ahead. You have anything you want to close any closing thoughts there, Eric? No, just uh, thanks for listening guys, which Joe will probably say here in a second anyway, but. <laughs> uh you know thanks for uh, all your support and listening and and uh really appreciate it we are creeping up on 100 this is episode 98 but we will be in 100 in a few yep. of them and hopefully by then um yeah we'll have this thing figured out and we'll be making awesome podcasts so <laughs> go ahead joe thanks eric yeah we again guys we appreciate your time uh thanks for listening we and you know like subscribe tell a friend we're coming up on a hundred. That's pretty exciting, but uh, thanks for listening guys. And we'll, again, we'll catch up with you in a week and we'll have another fresh episode out there. So take care guys and be safe. Bye. Later.